Good evening, everyone. My name is Ramesh, and I take care of uh, multiple programs on behalf of IISC. And I welcome you all to this information session where we are going to speak more about PG level advanced program in AI and ML Ops, which is being offered by Indian Institute of Science along with NSC Talent Sprint. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for uh, thank you so much everyone for taking your time and uh, attending this webinar. Uh, today's agenda, we are going to discuss more about the objective of this course, uh, the curriculum, uh, what to expect out of this program. And uh, the last session, we will just try to uh, go ahead with the question and answers. So right now for this session, uh, we have invited Professor Deepak, who is the program coordinator on behalf of IAC for this particular program. Professor Deepak uh, had done his PhD from MIT, and he was awarded as the excellence in teaching for the year 2022. So Professor Deepak, uh, we will just utilize the time which we have, and I request you to just do us a small introduction, and we can take it forward with the process. Sure. Uh, thanks, Ramesh. Uh, thanks to the Talent Sprint team for organizing this webinar and welcome to all participants who are interested in our advanced certification program in AI and ML Ops that we at IASC are offering in collaboration with Talent Sprint. Um, so, in fact, uh, I think this is perhaps the 11th or 12th program of IASC with Talent Sprint um, and uh, this is a PG level certification program. All, all programs with Talent Sprint and IAC are certification programs. So they are not degrees, right? so they are just certification programs um, that are offered uh, at the level of uh, a PG, right? So that's what uh, this course is all about. And in particular, this is a new program that we are launching, uh, which is called as AI and ML Ops, right? So Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Operations. That's the name of this course. So a um, little bit about myself, uh, I, uh, my name is Deepak Subramani and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Computational and Data Sciences uh, at the Indian Institute of Science. Uh, and uh, I completed my PhD uh, in computational engineering uh, from MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in um, Boston, US about five years ago. And uh, for the last four years, I've been at IISC uh, and uh, we, we are being, um, you know, uh, this is the second program that we are launching with, with Talent Sprint. Um, that is serious department per se. And I also run another program, uh, which is running for five cohorts. And now seeing the response from the uh, participants and the need of the industry, we have launched this new program. The ML Ops program is the first uh, in the country. Uh, and it's perhaps one of the top first three or four in the entire world, right? So such an ML Ops program that is being launched uh, uh, from IISC. So not only ML Ops, you are looking at AI and ML Ops, right? So today in the first place, let me take about 25 to 30 minutes and explain to you uh, what is AI, what is ML Ops and how you can boost your career with AI and ML Ops. So we have heard AI, right? So artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, deep learning. These are terminologies that we have heard Again and again and again, right? So everywhere, everybody talks about AI and ML. Governments talk about AI and ML. Companies talk about AI and ML. Um, so what is it really, right? So what is this AI? What is this ML? All of these things, right? So let's let's try to understand that uh, and see where uh, everything fits into the picture. But before we do that, let me actually uh, ask you four questions, right? So this is the AI literacy test, right? So how many of you here? Uh, understand AI or like what is the level of understanding of the audience? Right? That's the idea. So I'm going to launch a poll uh, with four four of these questions that are there, right? Uh, and uh, let's see how uh, how well we are all aware of this entire thing called AI, right? So take a take a minute or two and answer these four questions. So if you have questions during the webinar, I request you to please post it on the chat, right? So we will take questions, uh, oral questions only at the end of the talk session. So if you raise your hands, your question will be, um, you will get a chance to ask the question only at the end of when I'm I am done with the talking. 
So please put it on the chat and I'm monitoring the chat. And if any question comes, I will definitely take it along the way. Yes, I, yeah, you, it's like uh, about 69% of the participants have answered. So let me just right. wait for about 30 more seconds and let's see how it is done. Okay, we have, actually we have interesting answers. So let's see. <laughs> So I'm going to end the poll and I'm going to share the results with you. This is what the audience thinks about the questions. So let's see. The question first is AI can translate sentences into another language at the level of a human translator. 90% of you think that is true. In fact, it is false. AI today is not at the level where it can translate a language into another language at the level of a human translator. A human translator can do much better, right? So AI cannot match it today. The second question is, AI technology can analyze chest x-rays with equal or better accuracy than a resident level radiologist. Yes, that is true. Okay, so today AI is capable of looking at chest x-rays and see it with equal or better accuracy than a resident level radiologist, right? So that is true. Third question, AI technology is versatile and a single AI program can perform many tasks such as auto-completing sentences, controlling robots, etc. 67% of you think that it is true. In fact, it is false. Right? It is false. A single AI program cannot do these tasks. Right? So this is one of the major misconceptions about AI. Right. So when we hear AI, we think that it can solve power all powerful thing, right? So that can do all of these tasks, but it cannot, right? So AI cannot auto complete sentences. I mean, the single AI cannot do all of these tasks together. Right? So it's, it's not possible. And the last question, AI can understand cause and effect. Example, if I heat water on the stove, then it will boil, right? So, and at the level of an adult human, about 66% of you think that is true, it is false. AI is not capable of doing that today. And for the foreseeable future, right? So for the foreseeable future, maybe in our lifetimes, I don't expect AI to be able to understand cause and effect, right? So that is too advanced for today's AI capabilities and whatever AI is capable of doing, right? So over the next few years, I don't anticipate AI to understand these causal effects, cause and effect relationship. And to be at a level that is deployable, to be at a level that is put into production, it is very unlikely that it happens in the, um, in the future. So the question is, right, so pay attention, right? So pay attention to the subtleties here, right? So the question is, AI can translate sentences into another language at the level of a human translator. AI may be able to translate English to Kannada for a non Kannada translator, right? So you might be a fluent Tamil speaker, okay? And you don't know anything about Kannada translation, but you are not a Kannada translator, okay? Then AI may be able to do it, right? So that is, you are not a domain expert. AI can help you do things better than what you as a novice can do. It's that AI can do. So, uh, that is what it is. Okay, chest X-rays, well, and that AI can do, right? So computer vision has reached such a state that today it can diagnose, right? So it can analyze a chest X-ray better than a human can do, that, that it can do, right? And another major misconception, right? So is that AI, a single AI program can do all these tasks, right? So AI is not a single robot, right? So it's not Indiran, it is not Rajini Khan's movie Robo, right? It's not that, right? So it is not capable of doing all these hundred different things together, right? So individual tasks it can perform. So we need to understand, right? So because I mean very clearly, right? So our understanding what we think AI is capable of doing and what it is actually capable of doing is different. And that is exactly the reason why we need to study and we need to spend the time in understanding what AI is really capable of doing, what is really AI and how we can leverage AI. It can do several things, right? So it can do something, but it cannot do these things, the three things that we mentioned over here, it cannot do. Then we need to understand what is it that AI can do and how to put that in production, how to put that in operation. We need to study that, we need to understand that, right? So 
So if you generally ask a question, right, so what is the meaning of this term artificial intelligence, AI, artificial intelligence, right? So what does it, what does it mean? So in general, artificial intelligence is the ability of a digital computer or a computer controlled robot to perform tasks that are commonly associated with intelligent human beings. So intelligent human beings can do several activities, right? So now, if we give that ability to a digital computer or a computer controlled robot, if the robot can do those activities that an intelligent human being can do, we generally call that as artificial intelligence. AI is what it is called. And this AI can be data driven or model driven, right? So you can actually create an artificial intelligence system which is specifically model based, right? So you, you tell it, right? So in, in, in case you see a car in front of you, apply brakes, right? So if you see car in front of you, apply brakes, you can code that, right? So and put it in. So that's called as model, model based, model driven technique. A data driven technique is that you give lots and lots of data and you, you expect the computer to learn the tasks an intelligent human being would learn looking at that data. So the three things that we mentioned in the previous uh, slide, right? So the three questions in our AI literacy test, which was all false and most of you thought it was true. All that is what is called as artificial general intelligence or AGI. And that is the ultimate goal in AI research. Today, we are very far from that. It's so whatever we have seen in these movies, right? So all of the science fiction movies that we have seen, that the, the idea of that is AGI, artificial general intelligence, which is really far away. And so we are no, nowhere close to that today, right? So as uh, AI systems evolve, right? So we, we are nowhere close to that. There are few examples that keep coming up together with heavy dose of marketing, right? So like chat GPT, open AI, all of this with heavy dose of marketing, people are made to believe that AI is able of do, capable of doing several things. Whereas, right, so most of that, right, so most of that hype is hype. Most of those claims are hype, right? So, but that being said, AI is capable of doing several things. And what are those several different things that AI is capable of doing? If you understand that, right, so you will be in the top 1% of the entire population who understands AI and who is able to put that into production. So that is the goal of our course, right? So to make you understand, right? So what AI is capable of doing, how to do that and how to take that into production, right? So that's the idea. Now, before we understand, so there's a term here, right? So intelligent beings. So tasks that are commonly associated with intelligent beings that we need the computer to be able to do, right? So digital computers must be able, capable of doing those things which intelligence being intelligent beings can answer. So we need to understand what is intelligence. Right? So what do we mean by intelligence? So intelligence is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Okay? So intelligence is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. That is what we mean by intelligence. To acquire knowledge, what does it mean? It, is, it does not mean just merely collecting a lot of information. Right? So a, a Google database. Google search result is a collection of information. It is not knowledge, right? So it is just lots of facts that are there. Right? So you can look it up on a website. But humans have knowledge and that knowledge is a broad and deep understanding of the surroundings and the ability to generalize beyond what the data has shown you. So you can, right, so Google up and find lots of information. Now, that collection of information doesn't mean that you have absorbed that knowledge. For you to absorb that knowledge, you must understand, you must read this, you must understand all of that together and see, right? So what a broad and deep understanding the surroundings is, right? So in your ability to generalize beyond what the data shows that humans are capable of doing. Right? So that is first part is called as acquiring the knowledge. And the second part is applying the acquired knowledge to do several intelligent tasks. What are those tasks that humans do? Very well. Humans are very good at doing tasks like classification. So what is classification? The classification is you see an image and you say, this image contains a cat. This image contains a cat. 
or not. So that is classification problem. I look at an image and I see, right? So this is, I see a cat, I don't see a cat, right? So yes or no answer. So that is a classification problem. Is AI applicable in agriculture? That is a classification question. Yes or no answer? The answer is yes, right? So, but that question, right? So by just answering yes is useless for you. You must be understand, right? go, go deep and understand, right? So you must have an understanding of the surroundings and see how you can reason, learn and predict the different tasks that are there, how to use that, right? So as classification, how, how, how classification can be done. But if you see around you, right? So if you see around you, you can understand that many of the actions that I take and uh, that we take as human beings, right? So are based on a classification task that you do. So what while driving, think about the, all the binary actions that you take while driving. While driving, you see a red light, you apply brake. Right? So you see a red light, you decide to stop, right? So either you decide to stop or you decide to accelerate. So it's a binary action that you do. That's a classification task that you are performing, right? You perform tasks for reasoning, right? So how do you perform the task for reasoning? You, you, you can easily answer the question, okay, somebody is carrying an umbrella, you can reason and say that it might be raining or it is sunny. The cause of that, right? So that reasoning you, is very easy for you to understand that. And then we make predictions, right? So you make predictions like, oh, if I do, uh, if I, if, if Virat Kohli bats, right? So under these conditions, he will score a century, right? So that's the prediction that you are doing. And based on that prediction, you need to take some action. You need to decide whether to include him in my Dream 11 team or not. Right? So that's a decision that you take. So all of these are actions that you take based on your understanding of the surroundings. And that understanding of the surroundings has either come by somebody telling you that is what is based sequence. Right? So I'm, I'm telling you this is what you must do. But over time, let's say, right? So you see rain, you, then you carry umbrella, you did not get wet. On one day you, you carried umbrella, you, you did not get wet. Another day you did not carry umbrella, you got wet. And over time, right? So using that feedback by you walking in the rain, you then understand that, ah, you know what? If it rains, I must carry an umbrella. So it's a classification problem that you learned from data. That is what is data-driven AI. The other is model-based AI. So the job for us, there's a job for us is to train machines, right? So to do machine learning for performing this AI is to train machines using some procedure, some algorithm or some model that allows the machine to learn to perform these intelligent tasks from data alone. Right? So I want to look at the data and I want to have an algorithm. I want to have a model that allows me to learn to perform these intelligent tasks from data. And that is the task of doing machine learning. And that is why you see AI and machine learning go together. And so we see, we say AI and ML ops. And so AI and ML come together. What is the reason? AI is about performing these tasks, right? Intelligent tasks. And if you learn those tasks from data using a machine, that is train a machine to learn those tasks from data, that is machine learning. So you want to create an intelligent machine by learning from data. That is how AI and ML come into the picture. So in this case, okay, so to train a machine, right, so to make a machine learn, right? So that is what is called as supervised learning. Supervised learning is the most common and the most widely used AI training mechanism, right? So repeatedly, if you say that, okay, this image is an image of cat. This image is an image of dog. Like that, you show 1 million examples of cat images and dog images. You supervise the machine, right? So you supervise the machine to uh, train. So that is what it is called. Right? So as the uh, machine learning. Unsupervised learning, that is more difficult, right? So you, you just give data, you don't tell the answer, right? You just give the question, you don't tell the answer. And you then figure out, right? So, you know, what, what happens? So what does this data say? Is there a pattern in this data? Is, is there a pattern in this data? How do I, how do I take the actions based on that? So that is a more difficult task. Humans are actually very, very good at doing it, right? So there are all these IQ tests, bank test, IQ test, um, national talent search exam, this exam, that exam, everything has a part called as general aptitude IQ, where they show like four 
four images they will show and then they will say okay it will it will have an arrow pointing up or to the right to the left to the down etc and then they will ask what is the fifth one right so does it point to 45 degree does it point to uh, 175 degree etc etc i will see right so uh, that is a task right so that is what is an unsupervised learning task it's actually very difficult for a machine to do that so there are different ways in which we make a machine right so go from an unsupervised learning to a supervised learning task and train ai systems to do that a few years back right so maybe two or three years back reinforcement learning was the darling child of ai right so when uh, Uh, there was a famous uh, ai system right so the ibm's blue gene and all of those um, research that followed it right so open ai actually came with a reinforcement learning system right so um, that then was able to beat a human being in a game of go right so there's a game called a go in which it, uh, computer was able to beat and uh, reinforcement learning in fact deep reinforcement learning was what was used so today what you see the hype around chat gpt and others right so few years ago that hype was around this game playing reinforcement learning agent today you don't see it anywhere right so it was once a darling child it is no longer used for all these kind of tasks right so now supervised learning is preferred right so and that is um, what is done so now the question is so now we understand that ai is capable of doing these things so and i mentioned that ai machine learning is about learning from data right so learning from data is what the machine is capable uh, of doing so what are the types of data that are available and what are the models that are needed for that kind of data one is called as tabular data this is the most common form right so it arises in almost all business use cases time series data tabular at different times right so this is what is called as time series data the tabular data is the most common form of data right so arises in many many business use cases that you 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 will encounter time series data is like tabular data but it changes in time it changes in time that's what it is and the image data is increasing in recent years right so it's been uh, so you see a lot of images that are being produced there's cameras almost everywhere right so every every phone has a camera so now people are collecting image data more and more right? there's a lot of image data that is being generated right so and there's a lot of time series uh, in image right so which is video data so for example you might have seen uh, hokai you know so hokai is a system where there are cameras placed around the ground and very high resolution uh, images are captured frame after frame and then the goal of hawker is to predict where the ball will travel after it has hit the pad right so wherever the point of contact is how, how the ball will travel so that is a problem of predicting the trajectory of the ball from sequences of image data right so that is what it is uh, going to do so this is image data and then we have text data right so which has uh, which performs language tasks um so something like you have a amazon review right so and from that you want to say whether it is uh, a positive review whether it is a negative review or whether it is a you know a neutral review or not right so those kind of things so that that is performing intelligent tasks based on text data and finally speech data so these are language tasks that so you say hey siri right so or you say hey google and then it picks up that so that is speech data that is processing so an ai system that processes speech data so ai systems are capable of handling tabular data time series data image data uh, text data and speech data and there are specific models that are capable of answering the questions of tabular data of time series data of image data of text data and speech data right so that is what ai is capable of doing now you want to take that ai system right so that works on these kind of tabular data image data language data speech data and there are models that are capable of doing it you want to take those and put that in operation right so you want to put that in production right so now it, up to, up to about maybe last year or so models were not clearly defined for these kind of data types right so you were uh, uh, if we were having this conversation about 18 months ago i cannot tell you that for tabular data use xgboost right so for image data use this kind of model 
for um, language stars use this kind of model right so for speech stars use this kind of model that was not available right about 18 months or so ago so then there was a lot of effort that was needed to develop the ai systems there then today i can tell you very confidently that for these kind of data types and for these tasks that it can be performed this is the model that must be used right so that is the level of advancement the field has undergone over the last 18 to 24 months and so today we are at a stage where we can identify what are problems that can be solved identify the models that need to be done used for those kind of tasks and take that into production so now the next wave right so the next wave is the next three to five years or maybe even 10 years is about taking this AI technology that is there, right? That we have so successfully developed over the last five years. First, understand those technologies. Right? What is the right AI model to you? What is AI capable of doing? Remember, most of us don't still understand what AI is capable of doing. So first we must understand what AI is capable of doing. Identify what type of data it is coming from, whether it is tabular, whether it is image, whether it is text, whether I must use computer vision, whether I must use NLP, what is it that I must use? And then develop that model for the data and put it in production. So when you put ML ops in practice, right? So this is what is called as machine learning operations. So you must automate machine learning systems and put that in production, right? So using principles of software development and uh, DevOps, right? So DevOps methodologies, apply it to ML systems, right? So that is what is called as ML ops, right? So uh, the name, right? So it shares its lineage with DevOps, which demands automation, for sure, right? So now when, when you put machine learning into production, right? So you must automate several of the tasks such as collecting the data, training, retraining, looking at the performance of the model afterwards, all of that. So if you see in this picture over here, right? So whatever I've been talking about as AI system, right? So how, how ML models are developed, that becomes a small chunk, right? So this is a small chunk and all around it is configuration, automation, feature engineering, data verification, model analysis, lot of different things come into the picture of ML ops and there are best practices, right? So there are best practices to use what system for what purposes. So to put AI and ML into operation, you must understand the surrounding infrastructure and surrounding technologies that are needed to take the AI into production. So to build a solution, what are all the things that are necessary? First, understanding what AI is capable of doing, then identifying which AI model has to be used for which task. Once you know that, once you have trained and developed it, putting it into production by knowing all the surrounding infrastructure. Right. So that's the that's the idea of putting AI and ML into operation. Then the other task, right? So of putting AI and ML to operation involves it slightly differs, right? So there's a question: is it really just software system development? It actually differs from software systems. And where it differs from software systems is in software system development, continuous integration is uh, just about testing and validation of software. But here, when, when I'm talking about AI and ML. CI is not just about testing and validation of software. It also includes data, data schemas, and models. Now, within models, it also involves parameters of the models. It involves configuration of the model, a lot of different things, right? So when I do the continuous integration pipeline for ML ops, it differs from the uh, classical software system design. Right. So if you already know DevOps, right? So now this pose is the right option for you to understand what is this AI parts and how to modify your DevOps pipeline to accommodate AI you know, in, into it. CI means continuous integration. Right? CD means continuous deployment and CT means continuous testing. Right. So these are all DevOps ideas that has been taken into ML ops practice. So CD continuous deployment. Usually, right, so if you if you work in a software company, you are in charge of one microservice, right? So, or maybe one part of a microservice, and then uh, you just work on that one, right? work on deploying that. But when you come to the machine learning part, right, so not just one microservice, so you might be, you, your ML operation might be dependent on multiple different microservices that feed data into it, and it might give output to multiple different microservices, right? So a system deployment in a, a ML framework involves not only managing your microservice, but also a system that governs everything together and making sure that it does not break. Right? So when you do regression tests, right? so 
we have to understand whether data changed or whether the model changed, how to retrain, how to do all those things, right? So it must be very, very important in putting ML into operation. And CTs, continuous testing, is actually a new methodology. CA, CD pipelines is what you might have heard in the DevOps. CT is a ML ops terminology. Some ML ops method is unique where we need to retrain ML models. So if you if you if you de deploy a regular software system, so once you design a software, it it stays fixed, right? So the use case, um, I mean, stays fixed for a longer time period, right? So the main core functionalities remain. But in machine learning, the core functionality itself can change, right? So the way um, we, we way it changes, right? So that is what putting ML into operation involves. Right? So this is what ML ops in a nutshell is. And the entire pipeline of ML ops it, it involves you doing EDA followed by development, right? So this is where you need to know the AI, right? So the AI part you need to really know and understand for this data type, this problem, AI can be used. What is the AI system to be used? How is hyperparameter tuning done? How is feature selection done? What algorithm should be used? How to reproduce it, right? So all of that comes into the picture over there. Then testing, deployment and production right so this is where the operations part comes so testing right so testing is where the ai merges with the ml ops part ai and ml ops part merge together right so in addition to unit and integration test you need to do data validation tests or train model quality model validation all of these things are needed that is and you have to feed that back into the development process itself and develop new uh, versions of the ai models right so that you might need to do Right, and then you deploy, right? So and you put it into production, right? So that's the whole whole pipeline of ideas that that follow in the ML ops framework. So now, now hopefully you have got a bird's eye view of what AI and ML ops is all about. Now let's see what this course offers, right? So this what this course contains. So this course contains totally um, nine modules. Module zero is where you brush up the basics of mathematics and Python. Um, then module one, right? So when we start, uh, so there are four AI modules and four ML ops modules, essentially, right? So that's what this course is all about. So the AI modules contain foundations of machine learning and artificial intelligence, how to work with tabular data, right? So that is the very first thing. So what is training? What is testing? Right? So how, what is parameter? What is hyperparameter? What is all, what AI models are capable of doing? understanding that which problem can be solved with AI, which problem cannot be solved with AI, all of that right? so together is what, what we will do in the module one. In module two, we deal with computer vision. Right? So computer vision, uh, what are the different models that are used in computer vision uh, that we will look at. Then in the third module of AI, we look at natural language processing, NLP, machine, machine translation, neural machine translation, uh, classification, regression, all of these as related to language problems, right? So chat GPT, all of these things we'll discuss there. Then we have representation learning, generative models and research trends where we will look at uh, diffusion models and modern research ideas, right? So where, where the field is going in the next 10 years, perhaps, right? So that we will, we will establish. So you will get a very good, deep understanding of where AI is, right? And what AI is capable of doing. If somebody asks you tomorrow, right? So is AI capable of doing this task? You can confidently answer them and tell them that this is the AI model that must be used or not, okay? Then we have four other modules on ML ops, which involves uh, parallel computer architectures, training machine learning at scale, cloud computing foundations and uh, cloud machine learning engineering and operations, right? So that's where ML ops comes into the picture. You will read about, you will study about a lot of different tools, right? So in the ML ops framework, the first four, um, I actually I, I will describe in what flow the order of course will be delivered to your batch. Right? So if you, if you decide to join, right? So broadly 50% of the course is uh, on AI ideas and 50% of the course is on ML ops ideas. And we have designed the flow of the course, the course delivery in such a way that there's an integrated learning, right? So it's not, not separate AI, separate ML ops. That, that's not what we do. So after the bridge module, where there will be one week, uh, one weekend of campus visit sometime in February. So about four weeks is the bridge module. Then we have four weeks of foundations of ML and AI focusing on tabular data. 
then about four weeks on computer vision. So you will understand what AI is capable of doing and get very good, right? So we get, get very good understanding of the systems for computer vision then. So that, that you will get, okay? Followed by there is cloud computing foundations and cloud ML engineering and operations. So that is you'll get introduced to ML ops practices, CICD pipelines, all of those with the models that you have developed, right? So in the previous uh, two modules with those models. So by about halfway through the course, right? So you will be in a position to deploy and understand ML models, AI models for tabular data for computer vision using all the entire CI, CD, CT pipeline, all of that together, right? So you'll be able, capable of doing that. Then we have another four plus four weeks, right? So about uh, two, two months of uh, NLP and generative AI procedures, right? So that we will study. Then finally, right? So you want to get ahead of the curve, right? So what is scalable systems, right? So how do you train ML at scale, right? So now ML ops is not just about, okay, you trained a model in your notebook and put it into production, right? So that's not, not just not uh, just ML ops. So now you need to put all of these things, right? So or study about parallel computer architectures, programming models, figure out ML at scale, right? So how to train using a GPU, how to put into production using GPU, all of these things you will study uh, in the last two modules in the delivery flow. And finally, you have the capstone project presentation. So it's total course is about 10, uh, nine to 10 months long um, because there are a lot of breaks also that come in between, right? So there is a puja break uh, and we have one week breaks in between that come. So it gets slightly extended over period uh, of time. And the class structure, right? So if this is week X, right? So if this is week X, Sunday is when you have two 1.5 hour lectures with IAC faculty. So all the four AI modules I will be handling. The four uh, ML ops modules, Professor Shashikumar Ganeshan will be handling. So he is uh, the chair of the Department of Computational and Data Sciences. Uh, today he couldn't join because he had an urgent meeting to attend uh, otherwise. Um, and uh, uh, otherwise, he would have come uh, for this session. And so uh, one of us will be teaching you the four AI models, everything I will be teaching, four MLOps modules, such as Professor Shashikumar Ganesan will be teaching. And so it will be a three-hour live interactive lecture through Zoom, right? So that is Sunday of week X, right? So this is week one, Sunday of week one, this is what we will do. Then that afternoon, the Sunday afternoon, there will be three hour lab session with industry mentors, right? So mentors who are uh, working in the industry in the ML of AI field, together with our experienced uh, talent sprint uh, instructors, they will do online lab sessions. Right? So these are completely online programs, the online lab session uh, that they will, uh, they will be handling. Then the Saturday of week, X plus one, right? So if X is one, Saturday of week two, there will be a three hour mini project with the mentors and IAC faculty. So we'll be present. The statement of this mini project will be re actually released week X minus one, right? So one week before. And so the mini project's topic will be based on the lecture that was done. So for example, in one lecture, I'm going to talk to you about convolutional neural networks for performing image classification. Then that mini project will be on image classification, right? So it will be on image classification. Then let's say one uh, lecture is about uh, CI, CD, CT pipelines for uh, ML ops practice. Then that mini project will be on uh, using the CI, CD, CT pipelines for the computer vision project that you already have done. Okay, so everything will be in a blended uh, approach, right? So that is what will be uh, will be done. And this is an IIC program. We we uh, give you a certificate that is uh, very rigorous, right? So the program is very very rigorous. Uh, and uh, there is a value to the, right? So there is a lot of evaluation that happens. And one of the evaluation metrics, right? So is uh, to have a 30 minute MCQ every week, right? So Friday to Sunday, you can log in anytime uh, and attend a 30 minute MCQ uh, based on the week X topics, right? So week X plus one, you will be tested on the week X topics um, for over that weekend period of time. And after every two modules, right? So there will be a one week long, uh, longer quiz, right? So to uh, test long-term understanding, right? So of uh, things. The assignment and quizzes are actually individual activities. The mini project is actually a team activity, right? So it's a, it will be a group project. 
and finally there's a capstone project uh, that you can bring right so byop is bring your own project or you can choose from a list that we will provide right so we'll say okay we'll solve this problem using this data set that is also a team activity um so the work for this st typically starts after the generative ai module and there is one introductory campus visit uh, and one final concluding campus visit these are optional sessions so if you are in um, in the country and you can make it uh, please do come for our other programs we have had people travel from abroad also for this right so um, and the immersive experience in the campus is very good right so that is what it will be so all the lectures and activities will be on saturday and sunday only only the quiz starts on friday morning it depends on when you can take it if you want to take it on sunday night you can do that as well right so all the lectures will be on sunday mornings all the lab sessions will be on sunday afternoon and the mini project session will be on the sat next saturday morning okay, so saturday afternoon is free if you want you can use that time to uh, attend the quiz of the previous week and cement your idea right so cement your concept the best way to approach this course is to consider it week by week in one week this is what we studied and then cement it completely and use the mentors and use the office hours right so use the live sessions that will be there right so for for the program and of course i know many of you are worried about the tools right so our focus is not just on teaching you the tools right so say okay this is how you do psychic learn right so this is how you uh, deploy things on das right so that's not just our focus is not just to teach some tool we will cover all the tools that are there but our our focus is on developing the fundamental ideas that are necessary for you to survive even if the tool is does not exist two years from now right tools change very fast right? so you might be an expert in one type of programming language and that is no longer used you should not be out of job you will not be out of job if you understand the basics the fundamentals right so of the ideas and that is what we will focus on right so to to teach you right so the fundamental ideas of the thing okay uh, some of the sample projects right so that our students have been doing so far right so it's on fashion compatibility prediction um, several on computer vision several on natural language processing it's right? so all of that put into production right so that is what uh, our course is all about and why must you right so do an ml ops course right so a and ml ops course so this, this survey was actually done about two years ago right so there was a survey done by uh, among the c executives right so of the fortune 1000 company um and the theme was actually data driven business transformation connecting ai investment to business outcomes right so they they studied that right so that's what it is and the key findings right so of that was that investment in big data and ai actually has leveled off well, almost right 99% of firms they have in, invested and only half of them right so were actually accelerating their investment and only a very small fraction has actually put ai in production right so a small fraction right so that puts ai in production so what is the reason right so most of the companies said that the reason is they don't have people who can take the ai and put it into production culture the data culture was the major challenge technology is not really the challenge right so that was the major fight so if you see so there is this concept called as technology readiness level trl as it is called uh, many of you may be aware of that and until about one or two years ago right so i was saying 18 months right? about roughly about 18 months ago several of these ai solutions that we are talking about right so for image recognition classification uh, machine translation uh, nlp pro problems right? so tabular data handling problems all were at the level of proof of concept and the technology was validated in the lab using very strict condition now it is time to take that and put it into production so usually this is where the there's a innovation value of death as it is called right so this is called as innovation value of death and that is where ai and ml of trained professionals come into the picture now if you want to take whatever has been developed in the lab and ready to be deployed and put it you need to know what that ai system is capable of doing 
how to train that AI system and how to put that in production. And that is exactly the three things that we actually cover over here, right? So that is what we will be, we'll be teaching. All our modules are based, based on that. So to stay ahead of the curve, right? So you must get trained in AI ML DL, get trained in ML ops, and you must take leadership by getting knowledge of distributed computing and AI and ML at scale. You must not be following others, right? So two years later, when distributed computing and uh, federated learning become uh, popular in production, you must not be left behind. So we will be teaching you futuristic technologies. We will be teaching you um, technologies that can be put into production today, right? So if, if that problem you exist, right, so you can actually take that and put it into production. And our focus will be on teaching you the methods, teaching you the concepts, making you practice, and of course, getting to know the tools that are necessary for you to clear interviews, et cetera, right? So all of that ultimately, right? So you need to use them in with, with some tools, right? So the entire gamut, which I call as a hands-on plus minds-on approach, right? So our, our whole, whole course program, right? So there are several programs that you might find, which is just hands-on, right? So just learn a few tools, that's it. Right, so you might clear some interview, but after that, right, so what do you do? I have no idea, right? So I meet several, several such students who come day in and day out and see, right? So they, they know some tools. Okay, the tool has changed, the version of the tool has changed. The, the command that they studied that no longer works, they don't know what to do. I also see a lot of people who just have book knowledge, right? So uh, they, they just know the theory, right? So they don't know how to put that in practice. That is also not useful. A useful engineer is somebody who has both the hands-on and minds-on knowledge. You combine it together and put things into production. And AI ML Ops is the right course, right? So for you to take the ideas of AI, put it into production and learn from us, right? So at, at IIS, right? So that's what we offer. That's what this program is all about. Okay, so now I can uh, open to take a few questions, right? So that has come either in the chat or in the QA. Okay. okay, so some questions about the entry level prerequisites that are necessary, okay? So let me answer all the questions about entry level things, right? So this course is for somebody who has uh, at least two years of uh, experience, right? So working in the industry. So it is not for somebody who is fresh out of college, okay? Um, it is for somebody who's already working uh, in the industry and they, you might not be at all related to the um, ML, AI or software, right? So that is fine, but you must be working somewhere. This is for working professionals. And so our course is designed for working professionals. We can give certificates only to people who have completed their BTEC or who have completed BSc, MSc, right? So, or BSc with five years experience. So, some bachelor degree must have completed, right? So, only those people are eligible to take this course, right? So, this is a certification course that they can they can take. Okay. Um, then, okay. So. The after that, right? So, what do we expect you to know? Right? So, little bit knowledge about uh, mathematics at the level of uh, 12th class. Right? So, 12th class mathematics is necessary, and some interest or inclination in using programming that is necessary. Right? So, Python programming. We have a bridge module uh, which is like three weeks where you will be taught uh, Python programming. Um, you will have to spend a lot more time if you are a complete novice in uh, Python when you start off, right? So you will have to spend much more time. So if you have time, right? So you are welcome to join. Um, and those bridge module time, right? So like February second week to March around that time is when the bridge module will be in force. Um, so at that time you will have to really step up, right? So and 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 study, right? So that's what uh, is is necessary, right? So for you to do, okay. Um, then, okay, let me take another important question, right? So that has come and many people will, will ask this question again and again. There are like 1001 tools for ML ops that are there in the market, right? So uh, what is it? 
So let me tell you, right? So that's what I said. Tools change, right? So today one tool will be popular. Tomorrow the tool will not be popular. So if you study only the tools, you will not reach anywhere. So our focus is on, it's right there on the slide, right? So our focus is on training you with the methods, concepts, and practice using the tools that are right today available and enable you to pick up any tool that might come in the future. The concepts methods do not change. The principles of ML Ops has been around for a long time, right? So it is, it is, it is nothing new. It's only the thing is that the AI models that are capable to be put into production is available now. So you must focus on our focus is on that, right? So the hands-on and minds-on part of that, right? So this is extremely important for you to understand. If you go behind tools, we will not reach anywhere, right? So um, you might clear one interview, two interviews, but that's it. Right? After that, what do you do, right? So um, our focus is on the behind the scenes as well as using, right? So that's what it is. Uh, yeah. I request you to raise your hand. I mean, if you have any uh, specific question, either you can put it in the chat box or you can raise your hand. We can take it forward. Professor, there is uh, one uh, question. Uh, that, uh, how will this program help the participant to mm -hmm. translate what they learn in the class to their job? So if you can give us some insight about this. Yeah. So uh, over the course, right, so we have totally about more than 25 uh, mini projects that are uh, chosen from multiple different domains. Okay. Start, starting from banking industry to internet companies to uh, multiple range, right? So it's like a lot of different domains are covered. And in our experience of teaching uh, working professionals, those ideas, right? So that they gain through the mini projects uh, here, have always helped them in identifying a similar problem in their line of work and applying it over there. So even though this is a course, right? So where uh, we have pre-specified projects that are there in different domains, since we cover a multiple range of domains, right? So you, you will more or less find some match, right? So of the exact problem that you're facing and you, most of our participants have been able to um, solve those issues, right? So straight out. Uh, and what we train is way on the uh, how to approach any problem, right? So, and how to solve any problem that they face through examples of these 25 different domains, right? So that's that's what we uh, end up end up doing. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. There is another one more question from Mr. Shavan. Uh, he wanted to know, like, this is more career-oriented question, I guess. So what are the trends you are seeing in the job market for MLOps uh, professionals? So uh, I, I'm seeing more and more um, job roles that are opening up for uh, ML ops. It comes under different names, uh, right? So like a data engineer, uh, a data scientist, um, a principal data scientist, right? So all these kind of roles, which are essentially an ML ops kind of roles, that is what is being increasingly coming. Uh, so whoever is in DevOps, right? So if you want to come into ML ops, this is the right time, right? So because ML ops is what is gaining, gaining popularity. So you must learn AI and ML and put that in using the ideas of ML ops. Now, whoever is in AI, right? So data science, if you want to get into operations, this is right. And whoever is in software. So if you are in software, right? So that is what it will be, right? So this is uh, the idea. Let me once again clarify, right? So I think um, some somebody is really angry that they're putting it in caps, uh, the question. Uh, so this is a certification program. This is not a degree program, right? So IIC does offer a lot of degree programs. You are free to write GATE. Right? So please uh, prepare for the GATE entrance exam, write it, clear it, clear the interviews and come and do the uh, degree program, right? So we, 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 uh, we get uh, more than 1,500, 2,000 applications for every year. And I think the GATE exam is coming. You might have to prepare and uh, write, write it now. Right? So that's for the degree programs. This is a certification program where you will learn the exact same concept as that is that being taught in a degree program. Concepts don't change, tools don't change. It is the exact same thing that we teach, but here it is a certificate that you get, right? So, and since it is a certification program, you will not be an alumni of IISC, right? You will be an alumni of IISC Talents Network, right? So 
which is a big network right so the reason is that we 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 have we run a successful another program computational data science program in which uh, more than 500 alumni are already there right so that's a very big network uh, of professionals that you can connect with right so and what we have seen right so of our working professionals like most of them um, find jobs through linkedin and other places so because they learn the concepts right so from the course if you are willing to put the effort and learn the concepts right so then uh, all iac certification programs not just this anm log any certification program is uh, is uh, uh, eligible and iac does not have a degree program that is distance learning it does not have right? so degree programs are all in house right so you have to come here stay in a small hostel room and uh, study right so you necessarily have to quit your current job and come right and you have to write date and come right so pretty much that's what. so certification programs are different right so from from degree this is for you to gain the knowledge if you are interested in uh, getting the knowledge right so then then that's the right right course for you uh, thank you professor there is uh, one more question from mr gora i'll just allow him to talk okay uh, Mr. Gaurav, uh, you can proceed with your question. Mr. Gaurav, you? Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so I actually did not had a question. Uh, I had a comment on the, uh, the questionnaire. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can skip me. Uh, uh, you can skip me for a while. Sure, sure, no problem. Uh, anyone else? Uh, if they have any questions, they can just. Yeah, so some other questions, right? So, um, yes. what kind of audience do we expect in this course? What kind of background, right? So, this is what I mentioned. If you you must have good understanding of 12 class mathematics, right? So, that, that is necessary. And uh, you must have two years of work experience working in some industry so that you know what are the kind of problems that are there, right? So that puts you in the right mindset to absorb a certification program, which is for working professionals, right? So that is necessary. And you must have interest in programming, right? So that is necessary. Now, whether you must know programming already or not, that depends on the time you have in hand, okay? If you have time, then even if you don't know programming, you can join and get the programming material and be ready by the time the course starts. We also offer a mo module zero, the bridge module, where the basics of Python will be discussed for about two to three weeks with a lot of uh, examples. You must spend more time at that time, right? So in February, March, you must be willing to spend more time in uh, learning the programming. Then you will do, do fine. Uh, otherwise, I suggest that you pick up basic uh, understanding of programming, right? So over some time and join the next cohort. If you think that you're not ready for the um, kind of programming that are necessary. But mathematics and programming are necessary. Mathematics is the level of 12th class and programming concepts, right? So that are necessary. You, you need not know Python in particular, right? That, that we, can, we can help, uh, right? So with that, but basic idea of what is sorting, looping, all these things are necessary, right? So for you to... Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pranay, you can uh, proceed with your question. Uh, hello, good evening, Deepak, sir. I have a question that you told right now about this, it means after doing this course, you will get an opportunity as a data engineer hmm. or data science or a principal data scientist. But uh, what I am seeing over is the curriculum more towards uh, uh, machine learning, ML ops, right? Mm -hmm. So how means you can switch to the data engineer after doing this course or, or data scientist? Okay, so um, we, I, I think I have uh, some uh, YouTube videos on where I explain the difference between what is a data scientist, what is an AI engineer, etc. Your answer will be there. I mean, if I start explaining what a data scientist does, what an AI engineer does, what a data scientist all about, right? So it will take at least half an hour to 45 minutes to answer 
and convince you on why this is essentially the role, right? So that uh, a data scientist or an AI engineer will do, uh, ML ops engineer will do. Uh, I request you to see those YouTube videos. It's there on my YouTube channel, right? so you can look at that. Okay, please send the link. I'll I'll, 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 go I'll share it yeah. uh, with you, Mr. Pranay. I'll yeah. share it with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank Mr. you. Yeah. Most welcome, uh, Mr. Nikhil. You can proceed with your question. Uh, Mr. Nikhil, you are mute. Please unmute yourself. I am audible. Hi. Yes, yes, you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Deepak, hi. Uh, the question is on model zero. Oh. So I'm trying to uh, see if, if is this model zero or model zero brushing up mathematics in Python? Is it uh, online or in campus? Everything is online. Right, so there will be one uh, weekend in that module, uh, which is uh, a campus visit weekend, where we will discuss all these kind of questions right, that came before. Right? So what is a data scientist? Right? How to solve data science problems? Right? So how to approach everything? Right? So which will be like a broad lecture. Right? So that will be done on campus. And one this will one be, weekend week on campus. Yeah. This will this will be how many hours sessions? I mean, number of hours for model zero. Module zero, it's every weekend, right? So as I mentioned, the uh, Sunday morning lecture, afternoon, uh, all the modules will follow the same structure. Right? So, so for module, we said have to march is the is the module zero completion time. Yeah. So if I say, will it be for the four weekends? Yes. Okay. All, all weekends will be occupied. So if you, if you have something planned for the weekends, uh, and if it is more than 25% of the entire thing, maybe it is not the right time for you to take this course. So yeah. you, you need you need time, right? So uh, if anybody tells you that you can learn data science in 90 days, etc., don't don't believe them. Right? So it takes time. Right? So AI and ML ops in particular takes time. Um, so you must uh, have time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nikhil. Uh, Mr. Rakesh, uh, you can proceed. Rakesh Kumar, Mr. Rakesh Kumar. Uh, please unmute. Okay, we'll go to Mr. Rakesh. Okay, Mr. Tosif, uh, you can proceed. Uh, thank you, Ramesh. Uh, hello, Deepak, sir. Yes, please proceed, Mr. Tosif. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my question is like uh, you mentioned, like this course is not about particular tool. Okay. This will be covering the fundamentals of uh, MLOps and the details about it. Okay. But uh, what has been uh, seen uh, during the time of interview, they will be having a particular uh, technology stacks, like for example, certain kinds of tools and uh, certain kinds of cloud architecture. Okay, so how uh, can we leverage uh, this course to uh, answer such interviews? Because let's say like if in case they're focusing on uh, Snowflake is providing certain MLOps uh, uh, platform and even if in, if in case I see Kigai and other things. Okay, so uh, they will be focusing on the tool only during that time, how this course will help us. But what does the tool do? Okay. Yeah, but they will be asking about the tool only, no? I mean, that's... what does it do, right? So, um, let me let me put a find out a good example for that. Um, so, you uh, do you know driving? Do you, do you drive cars or bike? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So, in while driving bike, did they teach you how to go from uh, Maleshwaram to Majestic? Did, did that route, did anybody teach you during when you studied biking, uh, started riding bike, did anybody tell you how to go from Maleshwaram to Majestic? No, no, no. No, right? You just learned how to ride the bike, right? So you just learned, okay, this is the accelerator, this is what you turn. And you might have studied riding a bike on a Hero Honda, right? So did anybody teach you how to ride a Hayabusa? No, right? At that time, if you, if you get a Suzuki or some other bike, you can get on that and still drive, correct? Okay. So the tool can change, right? So the methods remain the same across tools uh, and uh, the path that you take, right? So that is what changes. But if you know the fundamental ideas, right, of how to drive and 
how to use that on one particular tool you can do that for any any tool that is out there uh, the issue comes right so is uh, thinking about these interviews etc as a tool interview right so if you think like that that is where we get stuck right so if you, if, you, if you understand that what is it that you are really testing is really the knowledge and your ability to survive in new environments right so are you a supervised learning agent or have you generalized right so the ai system that's pretty much what the, all all the tests are about and um, that is why the course curriculum is designed in such a way that you learn the methods you learn one tool or two tools that are most popularly used uh, and then have the ability to translate that knowledge in any tool in any route right so pretty much that's the idea good evening uh, professor sashi good evening thank you for joining good evening good evening yeah sorry about i was no late. problem no problem uh, mr rajiv rajiv kumar you can proceed with your question uh, you can speak a bit louder we are not able to hear you but yes, so i i think you're not audible so let's let's do one thing i will i'm i'm going through the chat and uh, any questions that are on the chat i'll answer them one by one Absolutely. in the meantime sure. you put put the question in the chat right so sure. uh, so let's see uh, is all sessions online yeah all, all sessions will be online will you get a participation certificate uh, so you will get a completion certificate if you complete everything um, and there is some amount of points that you must gain if you don't get that you will get a participation certificate yes uh, for this webinar there is no participation certificate um, i am attending the meeting from uk is campus visit compulsory campus visit is hybrid right so campus visit is hybrid it is not compulsory um but we have had participants from uk who came over the last campus visit right so that we organized we did have participants from the uk they have invited us also to uk we have to go no uh, and uh, singapore also we have had participants come right so will you assign vm to every student for online lab session so uh, depending on the lab that is necessary right so um, it will mostly be on uh, colab uh, or aws based systems so, so whatever is necessary for that we will give um, any plan to launch advanced coaching cyber security no uh what would be prerequisites right so prerequisites is uh, as i mentioned 12th class mathematics and an understanding of uh, programming concepts right so that is necessary uh, classes will be on friday no classes will be on sunday sunday morning is the class right so where did they mention that right so sunday sunday morning is the class sunday afternoon is the lab uh, then saturday of the next week is a mini project uh, you get about a week's time to work with your team and solve that problem right so that is what it is there will be a online quiz uh, that is available to take between friday and sunday you can log in any time um, that saturday afternoon is a good time for you to log in and flow complete the course right so that's what it is what is the duration of campus visit it will be one weekend right so it will be a saturday sunday combined right so that will be what the campus visit who will be the faculty so i will be handling the four modules on ai professor shashi will be handling the four modules on ml ops right so together we will be handling that um is it applicable for one who doesn't have python knowledge python knowledge is okay uh, even if you don't have python knowledge you must have time to study python right so ultimately we will do things in python only if you uh, for foresee that you will have time to study python right so then then it is fine uh, we will have classes one day of a particular week classes are on sunday morning right so that's what classes uh, uh, professor there is one more question uh, from mr kiran i'm just allowing him to speak uh, mr kiran you can proceed uh, mr kiran you can unmute okay another question is what proficiency of mathematics and python is required mathematics at the class 12 level right so and python uh, programming concept is what is necessary um classes on the weekends right so as i mentioned yes kiran go ahead uh, 
Mr. Kiran, you are still on mute. So the question is, what is the expected proficiency after the course? So if you do the course well, right? So and attend all the sessions, uh, attempt all the assignments, mini projects, etc., you will be at the level of uh, a trained uh, AI and ML ops engineer, right? So who is ready to go out and do things in the world, right? So that will be the level. Yeah, Kiran, ready? Uh, Ms. Padmasha is also there. Uh, Ms. Padmasha, if you are ready with your question. Uh, hi. Hello. Yes, yes. Please proceed. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Kiran. You can go ahead with your question. Sir, uh, so after the course, uh, alumni status will be given, sir. Mr. Kiran, uh, see, uh, the, this is a certificate program from IISC, and you will get a tal talent sprint alumni access. Okay. Yes. So, okay, okay. Not from uh, Indian Institute of Science. Correct. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Padmasha, you can proceed. Uh, hi. What do you believe? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, all, all these applications are developed with uh, Python. So now, now if it is uh, some some application, they will be developed with uh, C plus plus or any other programming languages. Whether whether it is uh, relevant in this course uh, will be implemented in other programming languages or whatever we develop in ML uh, will be uh, coded in other languages. Yeah. We'll be using Python. I will not be doing a deployment in other languages. Right? Uh, no. Okay. But 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 on the other hand, if you really um, want to work on C C plus plus, and if you are able to write some wrapper or something like that on your own interest, then the technology wise it remains the same, right? But um, then it is uh, the learner's responsibility of writing the wrapper and then combining it with the, for example, you can write always the um, core uh, concept core package in um, C C plus plus, but then you can write the wrapper. But it's uh, too much of um, additional work, but if you really want to do in that way, then um, that's where we allow like a free capstone project, right? There you can you can explore all those possibilities. Okay, uh, my question was, I mean, most of the time uh, the, we will use Python, but when when any speed or uh, certain things or speed space or uh, something comes in, then it it has to go out from Python, is it? No, okay, so we, we will be discussing there as well in the course program, right? But first one has to understand the difference. In fact, when we start with Python, um, especially in terms of the parallel computations, we'll start with what's the difference between the interpreter programming languages and the compiler uh, compiled programming languages, right? So then we yeah. will see how to accelerate and how can we make a Python work, um, uh, if not better, or at least similar to the performance of C, C++, right? So all these tools and acceleration we will also discuss. Okay, right. okay, but okay, but um, there are I know that there are packages ML um, libraries that are available in C C plus plus and then based on the wrapper and other thing. But uh, yeah, so though it's we mainly focusing on the tools and technologies uh, which we use all these tools to um, make the participants understand. But if someone comes from the software background, or someone really good in C C plus plus, yeah, that's where as I mentioned that the capstone project is there. Um, you are free. You are. Um, Feel free to um, explore that uh, option as well. Yeah, and last many libraries, last... Are many library, even though when we say that the Python, right? Many libraries that we use, if you look at the yeah, code, C++. then in C plus plus, right? So yeah. it is not like that we are completely avoiding, but we the focus is not like the developing libraries, right? The focus is um, um, importing the technologies, methodologies, concepts in in the ML ops and the AI, right? So that's the reason we are not really focusing on software development. Oh, okay. Background. If you come with the background, that's um, you are uh, good enough to try all those um, areas as well. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, as a last, last question, most of the industries they will be uh, when when they uh, when you talk about deployment or something, they will be uh, doing it in uh, C plus plus or uh, such kind of programming languages. Eh? If See, I'm not. Um, See, when you talk about the deployment, CA, CD, all these things, right? So mainly these concepts come from the DevOps, right? The mm -hmm. DevOps methodologies, right? So when you talk about the DevOps methodologies, right? Um, the software, when you talk about the core software engineering, it's a mostly about like um, the compiler-oriented programming languages and just 
May mainly main reason is for the performance and so on. Mm -hmm. But slowly that um, the AA and the ML, right, all these things are picking up in terms of the deployment, right? So then that's the reason why um, you don't really see many um, areas, many tools that use Python for deployment and operations, but there are tools, right? So yeah, it might come up, but we have to um, see. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Mr. Shatab, uh, you can go ahead. Mohammad Shatab. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, good evening to all. Good evening. Please I continue. Questions like uh, I'm more focused about on practical aspects, like what will be the facilities that we that <clears throat> this course will provide and the platform where we can perform the practical and the testing. So yeah. all the AI modules, uh, the practice and testing, everything will be on Google Colab. So whenever a production is necessary at that time, either on GCP or AWS, uh, but everything on the free level of uh, usage will be, will be necessary. Okay, and so it will be 24 cross seven. <laughs> All of us, or and uh, for ultimate that time, whatever of... Google decides to give you, right? So that's what that would... we'll be using the free Google Colab platform, right? So, okay, and, and also there is a um, possibility, right? That from the AWS or GCT, as Deepak mentioned, right? You will be getting like a small amount of um, the compute time resource, right? So, that's mainly for the understanding and the development, uh, right? How deployment and how to link um, the for example, um, the GitHub Actions and so on, right? How to integrate it? So those for from the for the learning purpose, you will get the cloud um, uh, free accounts. But beyond that, if you want to use it, if you want to really use it for the production and other thing, uh, then I think you, um, the users have to um, um, either they can buy it or they can use their own cloud and other thing. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh yes, please. Priyesh Pandey, you can proceed. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, this is Priyesh. There are a few questions that I have posted on the uh, 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 chat. I mean, if it's okay, should I read it or, uh, 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 or, or, or do you want kind of me to summarize and share it with you? I, you can put you you can put forward your question. We'll try to answer it here, right, sir? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, there are a few questions. The questions are largely related to that. You know, I understand that there are two possibilities for professionals. One is to go through the gate and get enrolled in the postgraduate program. Second one is to do this certification course, right? So I want to understand that the proficiency level after this will be similar to a person who does the postgraduate after gate, or it will be of a different of a different level. That's question one. It depends on the time that you are willing to spend. That's what I said, right? So the co the um, subject, the concepts, the the lessons that we teach are the same level, right? So as uh, so we we don't teach ML ops differently or AI differently to somebody who is in certification program or who is coming to uh, our M Tech program. It's the same uh, lessons and lectures, right? So and uh, uh, projects. Um, uh -huh. Usually, people who come through the MTech program, they full day they are here, right? So they, then they can spend more time. Um, and in theory, they must know better, but in practice, we don't know what happens really. Um, so we have had um, certification program students perform much better at the level of proficiency yeah. than our regular uh, MTech students. So it really depends yeah. on you, right? So the material course, everything is um, the same, right? So. And the second question is that in terms of the availability of the resources of IISP, will we have a similar kind of a access, for example, to the library, to the toolkits, to the to the softwares? So uh, our students don't practice? use the library. I, I, say I, I have been in IISP for four years. I've never even seen inside the library. So um, you don't need access to IISP library to study, right? So first, first thing. Um, now the certification program wear your don't seat have belt for a safe drive to wear your seat. Yes, yeah, the certification program students don't have access to the library. 
um right so yeah, but, he, but he, have, having said that right if you really but as deepak mentioned right um so i am in the library both uh, committees purchase committee as well as the um, other committees right we are struggling to get um the student in library the reason is now um, we, we cannot blame right it doesn't mean that the students are not using the um, literature but now almost all contents are available online um right so the students are seldom use libraries uh, in person um but if at all right if you really want to spend you want to learn something right always it's open and you can get a special permission from one of the faculty members then we will issue the letters and then using this letter you can visit the library and then use it right it's not like a default you can use it but if you really need to avail the wasn't to use it yeah it's possible in principle not only for people from this right even any student from or um, not even um, not necessary to register here also any student from any college in india there is a possibility we are open understood so my question is more from the perspective of the online libraries such as apsco and you know some of the other two uh, library resources and no. aggregated no. Uh, thing that is normally available with the libraries Correct. So basically, basically for for that you really need the IIC account, and then through VPN you can access all those, right? Uh, but unfortunately, um, the participants of um, the certification program, not only here, even the other certification programs or the CC runs, even the um, prof science programs and so on. So those participants of the certificate programs will not get institute user ID and account. So without the institute user ID account. um you will not have an access to all the subscribed journals understood uh, okay so, so the next question i had was with respect to uh, the um uh, uh, you know the, the, the you know the fees that the question with respect to fees also something we want to understand better what would be the structure what would be the payment terms how it needs to be so kind of Um, somebody from the talent sprint team will contact you with all of that details so you yes, can mr priyash uh, we can connect for this and we can talk uh, i mean separately to have a conversation about the oh, sure sure yeah? sure sure thanks thanks a lot for your feedback no problem uh, professor there is one more question uh, from a participant uh, asking uh, coming from engineering and industrial background mm -hmm. uh, i was told that completing aiml certification would be difficult unless you complete a certification on data science or data analyzing who so, who told you that did you say ha huh. uh, this is having eight one it is having uh -huh. coming from engineering and industrial background uh -huh. i was told that completing aiml that's what i'm asking i was told means who 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 said right so <laughs> that's the question <laughs> So yes. um, now that being said, right, so as I said, to do to do this AIML ops course, right? So you need twelfth uh, class mathematics and programming concepts. You must know, right? So um, now even if you don't know that twelfth standard mathematics and little bit programming concepts you have, you want to brush up. The module zero is available, but remember the module zero is only for three to four weeks. so in that 3 to 4 weeks right so you will have to spend additional time than the weekends that are uh, done here then you will be at a level to use the programming necessary um, now the data science course is also available that's a different focus right so the aml ops program is a different focus the data science course is a different focus both are not related in in the sense that both use a and ml other than that they the way uh the content right so is uh, different so um, it's up to you right so what you want to choose you want to do the data science course first feel free to do that if you want right. to do the aml ops course first feel free to do this right so yes but uh, there is one more question from mr prasad uh, it's a bit technical a uh, 12 years of manual testing experience uh, there is a gap of 6 years how useful will this course be hmm. how useful to so useful can be answered in different ways so Sorry. if you use by useful you mean uh, to learn the concepts definitely right so you will definitely get the concepts and everything everything done um now useful to get a job after that um, mm -hmm. that really depends on your um, interview taking skill that that we don't teach here right so in this program we don't do that we are focused only on the uh, knowledge right so of how what, what to do 
Now with the 18 years, right? So I, I don't know how the job market is out there, right? So I'll right. be very honest, right? So yeah. and, and also, right, um, one has to come up with the clear plan. What do you want to do with this course, right? If unless otherwise the intentions are not there, right? It's going to be very challenging, right? Just for the sake of doing, we should not do this course. Uh, that's for sure. Right. So we heard answer, right? What do you want to do with this course? Right. Then we can answer, right? How can you build what you should learn in order to achieve your goals? Right. So what okay, I know that you want to learn the new technologies, new methodologies, all these things. Yes. Um uh, what are you what are the actions that you're going to make after completing this course? I think if you come up, at least you set those goals correct, then we will be able to answer right what are the things what are the topics concepts you should learn so that you can achieve your goals and so on so i think the question has to be put it in the, so when you say so what is the use then i can also ask what is the use of um, doing a b tech or m tech okay, so we have to see, um, at least um, come up with some um, plan right um, action that you want to make after completing this spe specific course so what what we'll do, uh, Mr. Prasad, I'll connect with you separately, right? We can have an email or a call conversation about the same topic, and I hope I'll be. And we might have mis we have mis misunderstood the question. He might have uh, asked in a different intention. That better you can get the intention, uh, write the what he really meant. Uh, maybe then we can have a separate discussion on that. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, there is one more question from Shalini. What is included in uh, cloud machine learning engineering and operation modules? Uh, okay, so you mean the um, the curriculum or um, yes, in the curriculum. Yeah, ba basically, right. Uh, it's a methodology of DevOps, CI/CD, oh, right? Yes. CI/CD pipeline. But it's not um, when you talk about the software development and CI/CD pipeline. Um, it's not only about the software, but here we have to maintain the ML model and the, the version control of the ML model, version control of the uh, data that we are using, right? So in addition to that, right, the complete CI/CD pipeline plus ML model. ML um, re, um, uh, retraining, right? So all these concepts, right? How can we combine um, with the best methodologies used in the DevOps, right? So basically the CACD pipeline, but it is not just what we use in the de um, DevOps, but in um, ML ops, in addition to the DevOps um, software, right? The, the programming code, we have to take care of the um, ML training, data drift, model drift, all these concepts, right? That will be added to the CACD pipeline. Okay, so uh, Ramesh, I will. I think there are too many questions on the chat. Let I, me go through that, uh, and then sure. we will take the oral questions, right? So, um, on what platform will you practice? That is Google Colab, right? So, GPU, TPU, programming concepts will be taught. Yes. Uh, what all topics will be covered and not covered? I have already discussed that. There is a brochure on the curriculum that is available. If please connect with the talent sprint team. They will share it with you. The brochure you can also download it from the website right so of the course uh, can we reach out to other faculty members of iisc for any discussion or help you can see iisc faculty members are public um, servants right so they are government of india employees you can reach out to any iisc faculty even if you do the course don't do the course right so whatever is the thing you can our, our emails everything is available on the internet you can reach out right so uh, Reaching out to IIC faculty is not linked to this course, right? So mm -hmm. don't don't mix that those things up. Um, Azure, Python, uh, AWS, yes, Azure. We will probably have uh, some invited sessions, uh, but our focus mainly will be on uh, AWS and the GCP, right? So um, there is no replies to questions in chat. No, we are replying. Right? So, so uh, Mahesh, I'll respond to you. We have a lot of questions, and uh, we uh, might. Okay. Make uh, how will the reference and books be provided? Um, we will tell you the name of the books. Uh, you can get it. Most of the books today are available for free. Uh, you can, and there are some books that are, you know, the authors have pro put in a lot of effort and we will suggest those books. You can purchase those, right? So uh, that, that will be in addition to this. Um, I have a question in Q&A section, okay? Uh, full duration of course uh, is uh, February to December, right? So nine, nine months with a lot of breaks, right? So Puja, Diwali, all breaks are there. So it will be, uh, that is why the course is, appears to be slightly longer, right? So um, yeah, there's some other question about a doctor and an architect, right? So whether they should take the course. 
um so by eligibility wise you are eligible right so on, on paper you have completed a four year course or a five year course so you are eligible to do um whether you can successfully complete the course or not depends on your uh, ability on in mathematics your interest and your uh, programming knowledge right so if you if you are confident about that um, we don't have a problem right but you think about it discuss with the uh, ramesh and team right so on okay. what your levels are and then and then come up with that there is one last question uh, uh, professor can ai and ml work for optimization problems AI and ML is based. So uh, I guess the question is on um, optimizing designs and other things, right? So yes, it can be used. Great, great. Uh, yeah. So I guess um, there is. So, yeah, please proceed. So some couple of questions. One person is asking repeatedly, but that is there on the slide, right? So what percentage of class is taken by IAC faculty? It's there on the slide, right? So on the Sunday morning, three hours lesson. either me or professor shashi will take depending on the module that you are in then the 3 hour lab session in the afternoon will be taken by industry professional who are working as mentors of the program or talent sprint instructors right and the saturday of the week next week uh, the mini projects will be taken by mentors uh, and your team and the iac faculty we will be there uh, as well but that is purely driven by you right so you are doing the mini project right so that's that's what it is right so and all the material all the assignments everything we have created right so it's iac faculty created material um, so either i or professor shashi we have created the material right so depending on the module okay. so uh, uh, mr devdutt i'll uh, respond to you separately for your question the selection process and everything i'll let you know over a call so the lot of capstone projects on the insurance industry is there in our uh, programs uh, if you want you can bring your own project that's why i mentioned here right capstone project can either be bring your own project if you want to do a project in your industry go ahead and do it no problem or you choose from our list right so and it is a team activity that happens uh, professor i guess we have exceeded uh... i would personally thank you for this session i don't see any more questions over as of now but definitely we'll try to connect with all the participants whom we are not able to answer as of now yeah, yeah. so ideally one one question ideally how many yeah. hours or day is required additional to class and project times so um to be at the level of knowing enough right so then the class and the sessions are sufficient so to be proficient at doing things right so you might need to spend maybe 3 to 6 hours outside right so in a week that might might be necessary for you to do do the thing as well okay all right so good luck with everything whatever you decide to do right so have a good career and um, enjoy learning uh, ai and ml ops is a new idea new concepts that have come and we are we are doing that uh, so please um, enjoy whatever you do right so that's the, that's the message that i have shashi any closing words um no that's it um so all the best right um so the the main purpose the main focus should be yeah this is what i always say that right learn to learn right the technology methodologies will always come and go but learn to learn and given after covid right the new concept is like lifelong learning right um, if you think that your um, studies and the learnings got over um, from the, uh, after your colleges then that's not true right the, especially if you want to um, stay in stay connected stay with this um, technology right um, the lifelong learning is um, necessary right if not this course right any course that you're really interested in right um, you have to um, do that so with this right um, all the best and hopefully we will um, meet you in the cohort thank you thank you so much professor thank you thank you so much for your time